Coming up on Hands on iOS, it is time to talk about Control Center. These are the things that have changed since the introduction of iOS 14. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Back in April of this year, I covered Control Center, a whole video that walks you through Control Center on iOS. In fact, it was called Take Control of Control Center on iOS. And you should absolutely go check out that video because it's going to go into much more depth about Control Center in general. And this video instead is going to focus on the changes or updates that have come with iOS 14. So let's take a look. So, first things first, depending on what kind of phone you have, if you've got a home button at the bottom of your iPhone, then you'll swipe up. If you have a phone without a home button, like I do here, then you'll swipe down from the right side of the screen. That accesses Control Center. Again, I won't talk about the controls that you've already learned about or we've already gone over in that episode of Hands-On iOS. We'll include a link so you can go check it out. Watch that video first, then come here to talk about the things that have changed. The first thing I wanna talk about is media controls. That is in the top right corner of the screen. You may remember that before media controls looked a certain way, they have been updated in iOS 14 to give you more options, to show you some different music that you might want to listen to at any given time. You can tap on those. The more you listen to music, the more these little empty squares will actually fill up with music suggestions for you to listen to. And a new way for controlling other speakers and TVs that you Use AirPlay 2 throughout your home, and you simply tap down at the bottom to control other televisions and speakers. So you can see I've got a HomePod in the kitchen, I've got uh, three different Apple TVs, all of them by tapping on them, I can choose to play music from them, I can access the Apple TV remote, and simply by tapping that button again down at the bottom, I can switch to something else. So for example, the kitchen HomePod, where I could tap that get up and go uh, playlist and it would start playing music from that HomePod in the kitchen. I'll go ahead and tap somewhere outside of these areas to go back to Control Center so that we can move on to talk about the next thing. You might notice here that along with that home button down in control center there next to do not disturb while driving, there are now home controls right in control center. Yes, your favorite home accessories are in control center now and you can access them directly without any extra tapping, any extra long pressing or anything like that. I can easily turn on and off lights throughout my home and access those quickly to make changes. That is a setting that you can turn off and we'll talk about that in a second. The next one is something called music recognition. You may notice that icon there to the right of the low power mode icon. This icon is for music recognition. You might notice it looks like the Shazam icon. Yes, you are correct. Apple bought Shazam and incorporated it into Siri so that you could say, hey, dear friend, what am I listening to right now? Siri would then listen and then follow up by telling you what music it was. The music matching engine that was being used was Shazam. So now if you're out and about, which I hope you're being careful if you are, or you know, watching a television show or something like that, you don't even have to say, hey, you know who, what's the music? You can swipe down from control center, hit that button, and immediately it will start listening to the music around you and provide you with that information. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. And in fact, you can see it says Shazam music recognition there at the top. So you know that that is where it's coming from. Uh, the other new feature is this little bed icon. This is a feature called sleep mode. This is new in iOS 14. And along with giving you the ability to make 
your to to put your phone into do not disturb it also has some other settings that go into place it will darken your screen so that even if you turn it on it, it remains pretty dark it doesn't show you notifications so you're not tempted to go and look at those notifications and you can set it up with shortcuts to pop up certain suggestions for you when sleep mode is activated suggestions like play my favorite audiobook from the audible app or launch the audible app or well, it seems I'm very into audiobooks at night, so those are the ones that I use, but you can set those up with any shortcut that you want to. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by LastPass. Now with 25 million users and 70,000 businesses, it's no surprise why they are the award-winning number one password manager. They help you transition your remote workforce. Single sign-on manages employee access in a centralized view, so IT always has insight into who has access to what from where. LastPass has won eight awards this year. You don't have to take just our word for it. LastPass speaks for itself. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And then last is one called sound recognition. And you can see that to the right of sleep mode. Sound recognition is a little bit different from uh, Shazam recognition because it's not for music, it's for actual sounds. And I will show you, I've long pressed on that icon. I can choose settings there. It'll pop me into the settings. I can turn on sound recognition and then choose which sounds I want to be heard. So it can listen for fire, for siren, for smoke. It can listen for cats and dogs meowing and barking, respectively. Uh, different household sounds like appliances, a door knock, a doorbell, and it can listen for baby crying. And when those are activated, you can see here it says your iPhone will continuously listen for certain sounds and using on-device intelligence will notify you when sounds may be recognized. Sound recognition should, of course, not be relied upon in circumstances where you may be harmed or injured in high-risk or emergency situations or for navigation. But these sounds can be listened for so that even if you're unable to hear them yourself, the phone can try to help you hear those. I'm going to turn off sound recognition and go, well, actually, I'll turn it on for a minute because I want to turn a couple of these on. Let's go with dog barking, doorbell, and baby crying, and we'll go back and then swipe up and go back to control center. And then you can see, excuse me, you can see now that sound recognition is activated. I'll tap on that. And now I can choose between these different sound recognition options. Uh, so I can choose cat, dog, add more, take some away if I don't want them. And simply by tapping on that icon, it then disables sound recognition. Outside of these changes within Control Center, there's also a change that if you went and watched that video, I hope you did. If you didn't, then, you know, go back there now, check it out. Uh, I was talking about Control Center and one of the complaints that I had. So I'm going to show you. We went to the Settings app. We scroll down underneath General. There's Control Center. I tap on that. And up here at the top, it says access within apps. That's still the same. That's what you had before. I promise you we'd get to this next one, show home controls. If you do not want these uh, home items in your control center, simply toggling that switch off will take those home controls out of control center. Super easy. But you may remember that you used to have to tap customize controls to access this page where the controls actually were. And I complained about that in the last video. And maybe John will pop in right here, a little flashback to that so that you can see what I had to say. And I have to say, Apple, if you're listening, it is very odd to me that customized controls are a whole nother level deep into this. There's all this blank space at the bottom. You'd think you could just customize the controls right here. Alas, it is not that way. Well, apparently Apple was listening because controls are no longer stashed away in that extra tab, but instead are right here in Control Center. So everything's easy to see, and you can immediately customize the controls that you want added and the ones you want taken away. So that is, those or rather are the big changes. New media controls, new ways of controlling media, uh, the addition of home controls within the control center, uh, 
music recognition with Shazam, sleep mode, which adds a whole bunch of new features to help you fall asleep and stay asleep and stay out of your phone when you're in bed, sound recognition for hearing certain sounds in your environment, and then customizing controls happening right within this control center tab instead of an extra tap in to actually access it. Those are the changes thus far in iOS 14, but we are only at iOS 14.2 and there are still some point releases to come, so we could see more soon. Who knows, but I will be sure to keep you updated on those as well. Folks, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Hands on iOS. It is my absolute pleasure to answer your questions, to bring you more info, to give you the power you need to take control of your iOS devices, be they phones or tablets or any of those devices, HomePods, etc. Uh, I'm so happy to answer those questions for you, give you some recommendations. If you have questions for me, you send those to H O I at twit.tv. See, it rhymes. Questions for me, H-O-I, at twit.tv. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash hands on iOS. Be sure to hit the like button on this video. I've been loving your comments there. Thank you for those. Hopefully, I've been able to answer your questions that you've had in the comments as well. And uh, of course, subscribe to the show. Twit.tv slash H-O-I will get you access to the show in both audio and video formats where I am happy to answer your questions, give you app recommendations, and everything in between. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will catch you next time on Hands on iOS. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, host at Twit TV. Got a question for you. Have you gotten tired of how bad your photos are looking every time you post them to Instagram? Better yet, have you gotten yourself a new camera and you can't quite figure out why the images just don't look that good? Well, I have a solution for you. This is my show, Hands On Photography. Each and every Thursday, I sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. So subscribe today at twit.tv hop to learn more.